Today we are going to talk about the introduction to Science Olympiad. So I assume if you're here today that you want to learn some more information about it. Today we have a little agenda planned. So first and foremost is the history of the Science Olympiad program. And second, we will discuss starting a Science Olympiad team. Third, we'll talk about tips for new coaches, parents, and students. Last, we'll talk about some volunteer opportunities that are available. And finally, I'll dip into the wards plus Science Olympiad partnership. So we'll talk about Science Olympiad and then we'll talk about what it has to do with our company. So um, before I start, I just wanna let you know that this is going to be um, very much a lot of content being thrown at you. It's kind of gonna be like drinking through a fire hose. Um, we've heard from a lot of people that they wanna learn more about Science Olympiad, what it is, how they can get involved. And we've actually partnered up with the executive director of Science Olympiad. Her name is Jenny Kopach. And um, she's given me a lot of fantastic content to discuss with you guys today. So I hope you find it enjoyable and learn a lot and hopefully start teams of your own. So um, I'll get into what Science Olympiad is. It's the largest nonprofit K through 12 STEM competition in the nation. And it was founded in 1984. And every year there are 23 events from all of the subjects, including genetics, earth science, chemistry, anatomy, physics, geology, engineering, and technology. So emphasis is obviously placed on active, hands-on group participation to encourage group learning, problem solving, and collaboration in the classroom. Now, um, if you guys want the presentation at the end, definitely shoot me an email. I'll have that at the end. Um, I did embed some links into the PowerPoint presentations. I know I can't watch them live with you right now, but I just want to let you know that as you're looking through the PowerPoint, you'll see some links at the bottom to YouTube, and that's Science Olympiad's YouTube channel. So there's a lot of fantastic content. I think they have over 200 videos, I believe, on the Science Olympiad. And the one that I put right on that page is kind of their overview for people who aren't familiar with Science Olympiad. So I definitely encourage you to go to YouTube and check out their promotional video. So um, I'll go into starting a Science Olympiad team. So first and foremost, the students are what drive Science Olympiad to success. So you'll want to find some like-minded students willing to flex their academic muscles, so to speak, and form a group. And you'll need a coach. So if you're not willing to coach, if it's too much of a commitment, you think that the program is amazing, but you don't want to dedicate that many hours. Um, for example, you can ask a science, math, tech, or a computer teacher in your school to coach the team. Um, very important, see if the principal or the school district has funding for an extracurricular activity. Um, a lot of people start Science Olympia teams and they're really excited and then they need items to practice for competition and they don't have any money allocated towards the program. Um, if you guys don't have any funding allocated or it's too late to ask for that funding, I know you have to get in there nice and early and, and request funding before it's all gone. Um, there are grants available for exactly this type of thing. So um, shout out to Rusty, Dr. Rusty Barent is our grants consultant in house. She offers free complimentary services to help you write a grant, choose the one that's right for you, and win you some money. She has an amazing track record. I think she's pulled in a million dollars so far this year or something. She's, she's amazing. So um, definitely reach out to her. Um, again, at the end, if you want to shoot me an email or ask for her contact information, I'll be happy to give that to you. Um, last but not least, to start a team, you'll want to get a few parents to help out with rides and scheduling of different practice sessions and, and everything else. So go parents. <laughs> so next I'll go into some advice for the teachers from the Science Olympiad organization. Like I said at the beginning, it's very important to ask for funding for this extracurricular activity. The more people fighting for funding for this program, the better if you want to get multiple people together to go in at once, or if you want to kind of tell a few people about it and have them all hit them up from different angles for funding, just make them hear it a few times, make it known that they really need that funding for this activity. That's very important. 
Um, you can either hold an informal meeting at the PTA to talk about the team, or you can call a parent student session in the auditorium. Um, show a Science Olympiad DVD. Again, I mentioned the YouTube channel, but the Science Olympiad website does have um, DVDs that you can purchase on their store that go through everything that YouTube has on their website. So you can show the Science Olympiad DVD to all the parents and the students and gauge their interest. And then you can put up a list of events for the year with little descriptions. There's 23 of them, so it's quite a bit. But I'm sure the kids will see a, at least one event that they find interesting and, and have a sign-up sheet for people to gauge their interest. Um, there's some students that sign up for 10, 12 events at once. So you don't need to have just one event per student. It kind of depends on how much time they have on their hands, how many interests they have at the time. Um, some may only do the coding events. Some may do chemistry, forensics, physics. I mean, it just depends on the student. But you don't need to just sign up for one. You can sign up for as many as interest you. And definitely set up a practice schedule. Um, usually everyone starts with every other week. Um, usually in the school year, it's kind of hard to get everybody together, um, trying to get everything else situated for the school year, but um, assign your kids to the events and begin preparations. So a little bit more for the teachers here. Um, depending on your level of expectation from your team, plan accordingly to that. So if the students are kind of just hanging out after school, building some things and enjoying that, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, if you want to go to competition, then that requires a lot more practice. So definitely just plan accordingly based on what your team's expectations are for that year. In the first year, um, I would recommend attending a regional tournament just to see what it's like um, so that the kids can get their feet wet and get kind of a feel of the real competition. And they can also scope out the other teams and see you know, what they're building, how advanced they are, get some ideas and meet them. It's a nice social, these competitions are like a giant party. <laughs> so the kids really enjoy competitions. I've been to a few myself and um, nationals, for example, is held at um, a sponsoring university every year. So these middle and high school kids are running around college campuses, meeting everybody and, and um, opening and closing ceremonies. They dress up like it's prom. I mean, it's it's quite the event. So definitely bring the kids to at least a regional tournament the first year just to see you know, how they like it. And definitely plan to meet at least once a week leading up to the tournament if you do want to qualify. Um, schedule sessions in school as well as outside of school and the weekend to make sure that you have more than enough time. Definitely keep it, like it's the kid's responsibility though. So. You are going to facilitate the meetings because legally a guardian has to be there. But it's very important to remember, and a lot of people lose sight of this, it's very important to remember that this is all about the kids. This, the parents can't build one of these for their child and then bring it to competition. Unfortunately, it's happened, but this whole program, the whole mission is so that children can become friends and establish teamwork and communication and problem solving skills and build a car by themselves and compete with it. And if it doesn't go as planned, they kind of tweak their design and get it to the point where they want to see it. So it's very important. Yes, you'll be a facilitator for these kids, but very important to let them be in control of this. There's another link on this slide that I want to tell you guys about. Again, I can't physically click on it and show you everything, but there's a link to the Science Olympiad website for teachers and coaches, and it's a giant culmination of a bunch of useful information. So there's safety guidelines, which is a big one. Any tournament that you attend, they have specific goggles that have to be worn that are certain standards. Um, there's a coaching 101 guide, so everything that you would ever need to know about being a Science Olympiad coach, as well as keys to success. So that's a, that's a hot one that you'll want to read. Um, I don't know if there's any students online, but I did put together some advice for the students. So if there are no students on, then the teachers can definitely keep this for your records and 
show it to the students when you guys create your teams. So if a student wants to start a science Olympiad team, if it's their idea, they have a, they have a friend from another school and they have a science Olympiad team, they say, hey, I want to I wanna do that then they should go to their favorite science, math, computer, or tech teacher and ask them to start a science Olympiad team. Second is obviously to recruit, recruit, recruit. It is much easier for a student to recruit other students than if you're a teacher recruiting other students. And I'm sure all of you agree with that. Um, I've never taught before. I went from college straight into this position, but I had a couple students come up to me and say, hey, I have this really exciting extracurricular activity. I've been doing it for a long time now. I think you'd love it. It's amazing. Do you want to do it? And I say, yeah, you know, that sounds fantastic. But I've also had teachers say, hey, Sam, that sounds like you'd be really good at this. And I don't know, it's just, it sounds different in that perspective. You just, you want to be where your friends are and if a kid is recruiting another kid, there's a way better success rate than if the teacher is recruiting. So um, teachers, if you have one kid that's really excited about the program, then they're probably your best recruiting tool to get other kids involved. So um, the minimum that you can have on one team is 15 students. So that's how many that you'll need to have an official Science Olympiad team. And then you'll obviously, again, look through the 23 challenges that are offered to see if you want to do a portion of them or all 23. So it depends, depends on your team. And um, last but not least, recruit a nice diverse group. So kids who can build from the industrial, the industrial tech class. So ones that are good at research, ones that are good at chemistry. So make sure that it's a group of kids. Don't get the same kid. So the best teams that I've ever seen perform are ext extroverts, introverts, they're a giant mix of people. So the cool thing about that too is that they learn from each other. So, and that's, that'll definitely resonate into the real world too. It'll give them the experience they need for, for their career someday. So now in your career, you need to learn how to get along with another type of person if you're a certain type of person. So they give this, um, this gives them kind of that skill set now so that they know how to do that in in their careers so i saw this one time at nationals i saw this really introverted kid and he was fantastic at all the research events and this and this girl came up to him and she was obviously a bubbly loud extrovert and and they actually hit it off they they kind of learned from each other and then at the end of the weekend they kind of i don't know they meshed really well together because they were learning from one another so Definitely, um, that is an option. Um, mix up your skills and cross-train for maximum results. So again, that's the learning from each other aspect. So the girl learns to be a better researcher and develops more patience from, from hanging out with him, and he learns to step out of the box a little bit, step out of his comfort zone. So it's definitely important to cross-train and make those relationships happen. You have one question? Yeah. How much does it cost to start a team? Uh, the question for everyone who is here, how much does it cost to start a team? So Science Olympia doesn't actually have a registration fee. So it is free to start the, the team itself. You just register on the Science Olympia website. There's links in the PowerPoint that um, if you wanna email me later, I'll send that off to you. Um, the cost that's associated that you'll wanna ask for funding are the supplies that are needed to practice for these events. So there are two types of events. There's inquiry. So those don't actually require anything tangible. They're just using your mind. I keep breaking this hovercraft. It does not want to cooperate. So if you want to be a team that only concentrates on the inquiry events, then that's great. Then the cost is virtually free for you. And it would just be to travel, any traveling costs to go to the tournaments if you so choose. Um, if you want to do more of the building events where you actually put things together, then that requires funding that you'll want to go to the, go to your people for. So very good question. Um, more advice for the students. So this is my favorite part of Science Olympiad. Do not forget about school spirit. 
Make your Science Olympiad team known. Get the principal to make an announcement before you go to competition. Get team t-shirts and wear them around school. Hang up signs, posters, you name it. Because at nationals, I know I keep referring to nationals, but it's, it's the biggest party of the year. <laughs> it's kind of like um, New Year's Eve on Times Square. It's that same level. <laughs> so um, they have this, what's called the Parade of States. And all of the teams from each state line up and they pick a few representatives from each state. And they either have this giant flag from their state that they run out and they're all in costumes and masks and they have light up things on their head. And it's all about school spirit. They all have matching shirts, costumes, everything. And there are even some teams that go to nationals that actually have parades. The entire school has a parade for them before they leave for nationals. So school spirit is a giant, giant part of this. So make sure your school knows what you're doing and what, where you're about to go for, for nationals or regional states, anything like that. Um, the kids really need to keep an open mind and step outside of their comfort zone. So this whole thing is about, is about exactly that. So just keep in mind the Science Olympiad mission and have fun. That's the biggest point for the students. And I've seen them, it's not hard for them to do that. This is not seen as, as just continuing school. If, like just, oh, it's not just another lesson. It's not another engineering class. It is way more than that. They're gonna have a blast. So um, if any of you are parents, not just teachers, we have some advice from the Science Olympiad organization for you as well. So if your child's school does not have a Science Olympiad team, as a parent, you could be a great cheerleader to get that going. So the first thing that Science Olympiad recommends is get with other teachers that are friends with your kids and, um, I'm sorry, other parents, not teachers. So get the parents together, um, tell them about it. And if you have multiple parents who are into it, then you can go to the principal and definitely that's another part to fight for the funding as well. So if you have multiple people go in and ask for funding, then that's stronger than one. So while it's best to have the support, backing, and organizational skill of the school behind the team, it's definitely possible for the parents to become coaches as well. You don't need to have the coach as a part of the school. So most teams have several parent coaches. So for example, last year I met a coach, he only coached the engineering um, events for the school because he was a former engineer and he was technically retired, but he didn't want to completely leave the field yet. So this was a great way to get some volunteer experience and hang out with his kids more and still do what he loves. So it's a great option for, for volunteers as well. So Science Olympiad wouldn't exist without volunteers. It is an entire non-for-profit volunteer-based program. So the volunteers write the content for all 23 events. They run the tournaments, regional, states, and nationals. And they perform professional development for all of the participants. For example, there is a giant summer institute. It's called the Science Olympiad Summer Institute in Phoenix, Arizona every year. That's completely run by volunteers. All of the coaches, all of the directors, everybody's a volunteer and they bring in new coaches. It's, it's kind of for people who are brand new to Science Olympiad, so um, kind of show them all the materials and have them build some things so that it's easier for them to translate the information to the student afterwards. So events like that is where they really need volunteers. Um, Science Olympiad's currently looking for volunteers, and I have a list. It is regional, state, or national tournament volunteers. So you would actually travel to the tournament of your choice. They're looking for state volunteers, so organization on the state level. St uh, team mentors, corporate mentors, or employee volunteers. Event supervisor volunteers. So that's not on the tournament level, that's on the event level. So you'll go to a tournament and then you'll choose what events that you want to volunteer for. And last but not least, they are always looking for student volunteers. And I have included yet another link for you when you ask for the PowerPoint at the end. Um, and that is a 
link to how to register to be a volunteer for Science Olympiad. So now I can talk to you about why I'm even talking about this right now. So what does WARDS have to do with Science Olympiad? WARDS is the official licensed supplier of kits to practice for regionals, states, and nationals. So we provide all of the materials that you would need to practice for these events. Not the inquiry events, like I said, that there's two totally different buckets. The inquiry events only need this, your mind. So we provide all of the equipment to build on the tangible events. So the cool thing about our partnership is that we work directly with the national event supervisors to develop these kits. So all of this stuff right here isn't stuff that I've thought of to include. All of these are recommendations straight from the supervisor of each event, which is really exciting. So these people hand select all of the components, they write the instructions for each kit, and they create build templates. So for example, this mousetrap vehicle here. This was built from a template that was recommended by the event supervisor for nationals. So we provide kits, like I said, for the physical science and chemistry bucket of events, as well as the tech and engineering bucket. And we also have a special rock and mineral event. It's got, geez, I think 120 different specimens. It's, it's amazing, it's my favorite kit. It comes in two giant boxes with all the compartments and Science Olympia chooses the most beautiful rock and minerals to memorize. So, so it's always exciting to see what they come up with every year. It's all shiny and beautiful. And something else to remember is our materials, our kits, are not meant to be a winning design. So you're not gonna spend $100 to buy one of our kits, put it together, build it one time, and then win competition. That's not what we provide. What we provide is an introduction to the event so that the students can take this basic idea of this car, test it a few times on the Science Olympiad track, um, using the rules, of course, and they see what's not going so well for them and how they can improve, and then they use their minds and their innovation and their engineering skills to make some tweaks to their design to bring it to competition. So it is very important for me to be clear that we do not sell winning designs. It is meant to be a starting point for these students. So did we have another question? kits only for middle and high school or would an elementary school be able to use them? That's a very good question. So I have seen, so you'll want to definitely buy Division B. So you'll have to look at the Science Olympiad website and we offer kits for both Division B and Division C. Division B is um, middle school, Division C is high school. So you'll want to follow what their Division B events are for and if you have a more advanced set of elementary kids, then that's definitely, I've seen these go down to elementary school, no problem. Um, they are actually in the works of creating an elementary science Olympiad program. So at the end of this year, probably December, January timeframe, you'll actually see us come out with an elementary science Olympiad kit. It's not broken down into a bunch of different part numbers, it's going to be one kit specifically to support the Science Olympiad elementary curriculum. So keep an eye on that, but yes, if you want to find the Division B list and maybe push that down a couple more grades, then I don't see why you can't. That's a very good question, thank you. So I have, there's another page of a video, and again, I can't show you today, but I did want to put it in there because it's the highlights from the last national tournament. So you really see the emotion on these kids' faces and the, and the pure excitement that they get from going to this tournament. So it just shows how happy everybody is from Science Olympiad's effect. <laughs> another question? Oh, we have another when, question. When do the state competitions begin if we were just starting a team? Is it already too late? That's a very good question. It should not be too late today, uh, if you were to start a team today. Um, the only thing is, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna say this the wrong way, but people don't usually go to states every, or their first year. So, um, but the calendar goes, um, 
Regionals and states are at the beginning, um, end of this year to the beginning of next year. So I'd, I've seen them start as early as November and then go until January, February. So it kind of depends on the state that you live in. But if you were to Google Science Olympiad and then your state, every Science Olympiad state has a homepage. So that has your specific dates of when your tournaments are and where they are. So that's a good resource if you were to just Google Science Olympiad and then your state following. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely not too late to get started now. So that's why I wanted to get on and tell you guys about it so that you can go right out there and, and start them up. So did anybody have any other questions? Yes, I do. Yes, we have a question on the phone. Our team made it to nationals last year, but we don't have enough money to transport our kids. Is there anything I can do about that? That's a very good question. So um, the question was, they made it to nationals, but they didn't have the money to transport the students from that school to watch their team. So all of the competitions, um, well, I shouldn't say all. So it depends on the state. So states and regionals may be able to be like their spectator events. So nationals always is. You, you can go and watch the award ceremony and watch your team win whatever they whatever place they take home. So if you wanted to bring your kids to nationals but you didn't have enough money, then I've seen some teams, they, it's a Saturday night traditionally, the closing ceremony with the awards, but I've seen kids fill auditoriums of their hometown and they, um, the Science Olympiad organization always live streams the opening and closing ceremonies. So I've seen kids get the entire school together in the auditorium and they put up the projector and they live stream the closing ceremony. So they did that in California last year. So we had um, a national tournament winner in California and the entire school was in the auditorium watching the awards, live streaming it. So there is a live stream every single year of the opening parade of states that I mentioned before, as well as the closing ceremony. That's a very good question. Thank you, thanks so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? One through the chat. I have an idea for an event. Who do I tell about it? Okay, the question is, I have an idea for an event. Who should I tell? So that's super exciting. Um, they do circulate events every year. So there, there's mostly repeating events. They just change the rules a little bit because the middle school kids might move up to high school and they want to stay in the same type of thing. So they, they change them all a little bit. But new events come through as trials for the first year. So last year, Hovercraft, which is right here, this is my sample Hovercraft. Hovercraft was a trial event last year. So all new events start as trials, and they do the trial at regional, states, and nationals. And if, it gets, if it's a successful event and the kids like it and not many problems happen with it, then they make it into an official event. So if you have an idea for an event that they've never seen before, never tried before, then I would definitely reach out to, you can reach out to me, send it to me, and I can shoot it over to the executive director if you want. That's a good plan. Um, if you have any other questions, then my email address is on the PowerPoint presentation. It's Samantha underscore Bonelli at VWR.com. And of course, I said this many times already, but if you want a copy of this presentation for the content and all of the links that I embedded in there, then um, email our plus us team at sciencehelp at vwr.com. And we'll shoot one of those over to you. And last but not least, this last slide that I have are all of our product numbers for the 2017-2018 season. So we have all of our, there's one missing on that list that we're still working on for the optics kit. But all of the part numbers listed on the PowerPoint currently are live on our website. They are not in stock yet, but we're taking pre-orders so that you can get in line before everybody else. So definitely check us out and good luck to everybody who's gonna start a team. It's so exciting. Do we have any other questions? Not over here. No? Any questions on the phone? All right, well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I hope this 
kind of motivates everybody to get out there and start a Science Olympiad team, and I promise you won't regret it. It's, it's the most fun any of us have had in years. <laughs> I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself. It's quite an amazing thing. But thanks, guys.